So your teacher made you read The Lottery. That's okay. I'll help you out as much as I can here on this series we call Simply Lit. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to donate to my audio career, please do so at paypal.me slash dubonmore. The link is in the description. Now please enjoy this brief summary and brief analysis of Shirley Jackson's The Lottery here on Simply Lit, bro. On a sexy and sultry late June day, a village's townsfolk gather in the town square to participate in an annual lottery. The lottery is run by Mr. Summers, who officiates at all the local civic events with some big D energy. The children arrive first and collect stones and context clues until their parents tell them to sit down and shut up because the lottery is about to start. Mrs. Hutchinson arrives late because that girl is always late and she chats briefly with her friend Mrs. Delacroix. Some geriatric b-hole in the crowd brags about how he's attended every lottery. It's just another day in John Cougar Mellencamp's small town. I was born in a small town. I'll probably be stoned to death in that same small town. Mr. Summers calls up the head of each household individually, and it's an old-fashioned town, so the head of the house is always a grown dude. He directs them to a black wooden box that looks older than all the dying food in my ancient refrigerator. From the black box, each pulls out a slip of paper. Once the patriarchal bros have chosen, Mr. Summers allows everyone to open the paper to see who's won the grand prize. Da 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 da! And the winner is Bill Hutchinson. Then the Price is Right music plays. Dun 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 dun! Meow 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 meow! Mrs. Hutchinson, his ever tardy wife, starts protesting. Well, shouldn't she be happy? Her family has won the lottery. Ooh, it must not be the megabucks kind of lottery. There are five members of the Hutchinson family, and so stone-cold Mr. Summers puts five slips of paper into the old box, and each member of the family draws. Tess, Mrs. Hutchinson, draws a slip of paper with a big bad black dot in the center. Mrs. Hutchinson protests again that this isn't fair, but it's all for naught. The townsfolk surround her and begin to throw the conveniently placed stones all around the town square right at her. Even her own son, little Davy, casts a few stones. Take that for making me clean my room, Mom. That Davy was always a bad egg, eh? And then she's dead, just in time for some bland-ass cornflakes for lunch. Analysis One way to analyze this story is through the theme of ritual. Why would you sacrifice one of your own, like the Lady Hutchinson, for a ritual? It's either because the people participating in the ritual truly believe, or want to believe, that they have to sacrifice someone for things to turn out alright the next year. For the harvest and the super corn to grow well. For the children to be born without hunchbacks. For success to come in all your boy band endeavors. Therefore, the very idea of ritual is put into question, and it's up to you to analyze what that means. How far would you go for belief? To have faith that things will be okay. What does the idea of ritual now mean to you because of this story? What is the intended moral of this story? Can ritual of this sort serve a purpose? How does ritual affect the individual and the society? Jackson wrote this in 1948. Are its themes still relevant today? And that's it for now, y'all. There's plenty more to analyze in this story than what I've just mentioned. Ouch! Quit throwing rocks, you b-holes! It's a Hutchinson gal that drew the slip. Damn. If you have any requests for short stories or poetry summaries and analysis, please let me know in the comments. Wishing you all a good day. Stay lit with Simply Lit.